What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're gonna be checking out the smallest, most portable laptop webcam I've ever seen. This is the Opal Tadpole. A super tiny 35 by 45 millimeter webcam that's a fifth of the size and half the price of the Opal C1 webcam they released two years ago, and they're famously backed by Casey Neistat and MKBHD. They did send this out for me to check out, but as you guys know, all thoughts and opinions are my own. So in this video, we'll run through the Tadpole's features, camera quality and how it looks, and why the Tadpole is the most convenient webcam that pops onto your laptop to make jumping on calls easier than ever. No more dealing with your laptop's crappy built-in webcam or lugging around something bulky. This is literally the polar opposite. So checking it out right away, you can see just how tiny this is. Weighing just 35 grams and coming in at 35 by 45 millimeters, like I mentioned before, the Tadpole is designed so that working on a laptop from home, in a cafe, or while you're out on vacation isn't going to hinder you from having that professional look on camera. And one of the nifty ways they've designed this to use with your laptop on the go is with this built-in clip on the backside, so you can mount it without needing a tripod or adapter like other external webcams. Pretty cool. To match your aesthetic or preference, they're available in a white and black, or like a dark slate color, both equally as nice and visually blends well, especially with my MacBook Pro, which I've been using this with. They also have a color matching woven nylon USB-C cable that's around 21 and a half inches in length. And built into the cable header is a touch sensitive mute controller, so you can quickly and easily mute your audio on the fly. And this is great so you don't have to fiddle around in whatever software you're using to find where the mute button is. Here, if you need to just quickly kill your mic, you just touch the USB-C port and you're good to go. Now, in terms of hardware and specs, this uses a six element Sony half inch sensor recording at 1080p 30 FPS for those Zoom or business calls. And don't worry, you'll see in just a minute how this looks. But getting it set up is literally plug and play. You don't even technically need software. Just clip it to the top of your laptop, plug it in, and you're up and running. Now for a visual example and comparison to give you an idea of how tiny this really is, sure there's other solutions out there like Apple's continuity cam, which yeah, looks great, but it's just not convenient to do. You need a mount for that and you won't have access to your phone. There's also other bulky webcams, which just you wouldn't want to lug with you on the go. And then there's the Tadpole. And I think by now you understand the word convenience here and how many times I've used it in reference to this. The clip can fit onto a six and a half millimeter thick screen or bezel, tablets included by the way, so ideally fit for your laptop, but not limited to just your laptop. Okay, so far you've got an idea of who this camera is for, right? Not your gaming Twitch streams, but for the evolving work environment. So how does it look? What we're gonna do right now is head behind that camera because it wouldn't make sense to do the video test right here when I have four different you know, professional lights in front of me to light this setup. That's just not realistic and that's not the normal average use case. So we'll head to my setup behind this camera here and we'll test it out for you. Okay, so this is the image quality of the Opal Tadpole recording in 1080p with that half inch Sony sensor. Now, everything you're seeing right now is stock, unedited. Nothing's been adjusted inside their software because it's all plug and play. You don't need the software technically. Sure, you can do it to adjust the image to your liking and you know alter it a little bit. I'll show you just a little bit of that coming up in a minute as well. This is all auto, stock, unedited. And also what you're hearing is the built-in mic on the Tadpole designed to really only pick up what's in front of it. So what the Tadpole sees, with an emphasis, obviously, on my voice and background elimination. So ideally, you won't be hearing the pups upstairs screaming every 30 seconds when someone walks by outside. I've got two corgis. They think they run the whole world, so they bark at everything, trying to hold down the fort. So you won't be able to hear them, ideally. Also, if you're filming like in a room with an air conditioning or by your PC where there's a lot of fans going on to keep it cool, you won't hear that either. Just what's right in front of it. So what you're seeing and what you're hearing is all stock from the Tadpole. One of the things that I really liked that was apparent the second I plugged it in was how natural the image quality looks. It's not artificially oversaturated or over sharpened or anything. It looks really clean and natural. And just for like a little uh, demo for you guys, like a uh, a color chart, just to give you an idea 
of the different colors because there's not a lot of colors in this certain setting right now where I am. Just like some browns, greens, and blues with my shirt. Uh, you can see the colors here all look really natural. Sort of my main emphasis in takeaway with the Tadpoles image quality. The autofocus looks really good. It's quick. It adjusts. Really happy with what I'm seeing. Now, one of the things I do want to show you inside their uh, Composer software, we won't spend too much time on this at all, is you have bokeh control, which is actually pretty cool as well, because right now what you're seeing is at f.4. So if you wanted to have that real sort of blurred background, you can adjust it all the way down to f1.8 with the tadpole. And sure, there is a little bit of fringing around like my hair and my ears, but it's not nearly as aggressive as a lot of other companies I've seen out there with their artificial blurring, whether it's with the camera, with the software. It makes it really, really bad looking. This looks more than usable at f1.8. You can adjust that all the way up to f5.7. So everything's sharp, but really around f3.8, you know, f.4, you have a nice blur in the background, a nice roll off. It looks really, really good. Um, another thing you can do, obviously, how like your tint and your temperature, your color temperature control for adjusting your highlights and shadows as well. You also have something pretty interesting, which is color control. This gives you, let's see, eight different palettes here. And for each color in your image, you can adjust the hue, the saturation, and the brightness of just that color. So that's really cool if you're like, say, you're like a green screen scenario where you have a green screen behind you, but maybe the lighting isn't perfect or it's coming off a little bit too yellow or too blue. You can adjust the hue of that, adjust the brightness just for that color, including the saturation to make that green more punchy. If you want your shirt to pop a little bit more, you have the individual color control, which is really, really unique and not something that I've seen anywhere else. So definitely cool to see that in webcam software. That's stuff that I mess with when I'm editing in like Premiere Pro. So like I said, impressive to see it here on the Tadpole. But yes, what you're seeing right now is what you get. I think it looks really good. I'm also really impressed with the fact that I have a massive light in the back here. And it didn't overcompensate for how bright that is. It, you know, you can adjust the highlights individually and it won't adjust the entire image. It'll adjust just the highlights, which is what it did automatically in the software. It brought the highlights all the way down. So that's not completely blown out, but also I still look, you know, illuminated enough. So the stock image, as you've been seeing, what I've, what I've been saying this whole time, very, very natural. Okay, now one thing I wanna show you real quick is kinda of like a bonus, and it's what really sold this camera for me in the end, and I realize it's a completely niche sort of solution, but it's what ultimately made me decide to use this camera going forward. With that built-in clip, one thing that I done is clip this to my shirt for a POV shot when I stream on Whatnot for doing my live auctions. Whatnot streams are vertical, so it's perfect that clipping it to my shirt is just naturally sideways, that I can feed it directly into OBS and live stream right on Whatnot to give the viewers a realistic look of like the card that I'm selling and how that looks, especially with that close-up autofocus really letting me show off the card properly. Again, I know this is super niche, probably uh, very unique to a small demographic out there, but it just works perfectly for me. And this was honestly the first thing I thought of when I got the camera in. Then after testing it and using it, it makes my stream just so much easier and better for the viewer with that POV shot. Okay, so at the end of the day, this comes in at $175, which I think is more than fair given the current webcam environment. And I just, I'm really a fan of how natural the image looks. It's just really well designed. The overall webcam itself, it's super sleek and minimal. And again, having that convenience to use this so easily on the go, clip it to your laptop and be on your way is a really special sort of use case for this where I feel like a lot of people in that work environment could really capitalize on and would find this most useful versus other webcams out there. So looks really good in terms of the actual quality and the actual design of it itself. Now for the cons, there are a few things that I wanna mention. First up, it's not really a negative thing, but something worth noting. For like in my case, when I'm using it on the MacBook Pro, naturally, I just wanna use it right in the middle of the bezel where it has the infamous notch. 
it's obviously a perfect fit to just place it there, but that does also block like the light sensor. So it does dim your screen. You can either just turn that off in your, in your webcam settings or just manually adjust the brightness. A very minor thing, but just figured I'd bring that up. Another thing I do want to talk about goes right along with that clip. Sure, it's designed to be used with laptops. So you can't use this on like your monitor, for example. It's just too thick. Yeah, you can just place it on top of your monitor and still use it that way. It's gonna be more than fine. And granted, it is technically designed to be used with laptops. I just think it's a slightly limiting factor here, um, having you know the clip not being able to really attach to a monitor. But like I showed you, you can just place it on there at the end of the day. So big fan of the Opal Tadpole, definitely gonna use it personally going forward. And what's also pretty cool is they do sell a separate carrying case for it if you are bringing it with you and you don't wanna get it damaged. There's an included webcam cover that will protect the lens. You put it in, and you're on your way. All right, guys, so that'll wrap it up for my look and tests of the Opal Tadpole. Hope you all enjoyed. If you wanna check it out, I'll have the links for you in the description down below so you can find out more or pick it up if you're interested. If this video helped you out, give it a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at randomfrankp. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day.